Hello, welcome to another of our sessions of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma and our program part of Path Presenter and the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our case today comes from the realm of digital pathology, excuse me, of uh, gynecologic pathology and is uh, a rather interesting case that came to us in consultation. Uh, the patient is a uh, fairly young woman 37 years old and has been noted to have a quite enlarged uterus, almost a 14 to 16 week size. Um, and as she had uh, completed her childbearing, uh, they opted for uh, a uh, hysterectomy and the uh, uterus was re removed showing a uh, single large dominant uh, intramural mass. Um, on sampling this uh, mass, however, uh, which was somewhat yellow in appearance, a little bit of an unusual appearance, um, you can see why it looked yellow because there's a lot of uh, fat in this uh, tumor, a lot of open clear space here uh, that uh, turns out to be uh, fat cells. As we uh, come in a little bit closer on this uh, tumor, uh, we see that there's some variability in cellularity. Um, and uh, a few medium to large size vessels as well uh, as this uh, fairly abundant uh, fat uh, around in different areas. Now in a few areas, uh, the uh, cells uh, show a degree of uh, atypia. So we see a few cells that uh, look here as though the uh, nuclei are uh, rather uh, large, <clears throat> although these uh, Surrounding cells here are fairly small uh, relative to the size of, nu of the nucleus. Uh, and there's a degree of uh, pleomorphism and uh, uh, so forth here. So immunohistochemical stains were conducted uh, that demonstrated these to be nicely positive with uh, Desmond and other smooth muscle markers <clears throat> and negative for HMB45 or markers of uh, other markers of PCOMA. Uh, so, um, also performed was a, a careful mitotic count. Uh, in light of the uh, atypia here, uh, there was uh, some concern for uh, smooth muscle malignancy. Um, well, if you recall, a few weeks ago, we talked about some of the spindle cell lesion that, that can occur in the uterine corpus. And of course, the most common of these is smooth muscles tumors. Uh, we've talked before about the differentiation between uh, malignant, borderline, and uh, benign smooth muscle tumors. Uh, we haven't talked too much about fatty tumors, and there are occasional uh, uh, fat-containing sarcomas that can occur in the uterus. Um, and so uh, this uh, sort of raises an interesting differential. Um, so uh, looking a little further at this uh, case, we looked very carefully at the margins, uh, which were quite sharply demarcated. There was no sense of any infiltration uh, of this tumor into the surrounding myometrium. A little bit of uh, you know, myxoid, uh, mucoid degeneration, uh, but uh, still some degree of uh, persistent atypia in variable areas. And in some areas, it's almost uh, you know, totally fat or myxoid uh, tissue uh, as opposed to just very tr small traces of uh, residual uh, smooth muscle tissue. Um, and again, uh, a degree of atypia. However, despite very careful search, I could not identify any mitotic figures. Um, the KI-67 stain was performed and showed, you know, a rather difficult to evaluate uh, number given the fairly low cellularity here, uh, but fairly low uh, percentage labeling with the KI-67. So what are we going to do with this tumor with uh, smooth muscle differentiation, fat present, and atypia? Well, uh, I think there's a couple of things to be concerned about and to, where the differential really lies. Is it a lipoliomyoma um, or is it a smooth muscle tumor of uncertain malignant potential? Well, we know that to, to make that diagnosis, we'd like to see one of three more malignant uh, features uh, present, coagulative necrosis, uh, which we do not have anywhere, cytologic atypia, which we probably do, and uh, an elevated mitotic count, which we do not. Um, 
So conceivably, this could be termed a smooth muscle tumor of uncertain malignant potential. But we also know that there are smooth muscle tumors with bizarre nuclei that are not included in this category. Um, and could this be one of those type of lesions? On the other hand, a lipoglyomyoma is a generally a benign tumor uh, that can have quite variable amounts of fat. And usually this occurs in postmenopausal women. So the age group's not quite right for that entity uh, in one sense. Uh, a little bit closer here for the smooth muscle tumor of uncertain malignant potential. So what are we going to do with these atypical nuclei? Well, thank goodness for Dr. Google, because uh, you can uh, sometimes search for terms like uh, lipoliomyoma with bizarre nuclei. And lo and behold, uh, some of my colleagues from the Mass General uh, 10 years ago or so published a nice little small series of three cases of liposarcoma arising in the uterus, two of which included a component of lipoliomyoma with bizarre nuclei. And these were occurring in a, a you know, adult peri postmenopausal age group. Um, and there have been earlier reports of liposarcoma arising from lipoliomyoma as well. So uh, based on this sort of information, I think the risk in our patient is not uh, the development of a recurrent smooth muscle tumor, but rather uh, that uh, this was a risk lesion for liposarcoma. Um, and that follow-up should therefore include that kind of uh, evaluation in the differential considerations. Certainly, I would recommend that this patient receive uh, regular, although not necessarily highly frequent, follow-up uh, in light of this uh, diagnosis. So how did we word this? Well, uh, we signed this out with a note, but the top-line diagnosis was lipoliomyoma with bizarre nuclei. And we included some reference to some of these earlier case series of uh, lipo, excuse me, liposarcoma arising from such tumors. So that's uh, how we handled this uh, challenging case. And I uh, uh, encourage you to take a look at the slides and see what your thoughts are, uh, whether you can identify any mitotic uh, activity, which we could not, um, and whether you agree with our diagnosis or otherwise. So we welcome your thoughts and feedback. If you like this, please hit subscribe so that you'll catch future releases. And don't hesitate to share it with your colleagues or friends uh, so that they can also be aware of some of the things that you're learning and thinking about. Uh, so until next time, uh, thanks so much for joining us.